to their doctor. We're already starting the conversation as we welcome you into News Channel 11 at 5.30. I'm Jai Smith, and we're taking your questions and putting them to the experts because our goal is to help you keep the information straight from the hype and be informed as we're dealing with an outbreak of uh, COVID-19. Joining us again in the studio is Dr. David Kershke. He's medical director for the Northeast Tennessee Regional Health Department. Thank you so much for joining us yeah, again. Thanks. I've known you for years. You're one of the most chill human beings I know. There are a lot of people who are watching at home tonight who after a day full of news yeah. and closures are freaking out. Let's just be really honest. Right. You're not. I want you to speak to those people. Knowing what you know yeah. right now, what do you want people to know about the level of alarm that they should have? Yeah, so I think in our area, it's really the same message we've had, you know, for the last week or two. Um, so social distancing, there's a lot of common sense things that have gone into place. Hand washing is still one of the most critical things, especially staying home when you're sick. So we need to convince people to stay home when they're sick because we know people are still showing up at work sick. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they need to really take that seriously, stay mm -hmm. home when they're sick. Mm -hmm. um, and then if, if people are sick and they, you know, think they may need to be tested for coronavirus, we don't have any evidence of widespread transmission in our community, um, but if they think they need to be tested, they should call their health care provider probably before just showing up, call ahead, let them know, and they might be able to get some advice over the phone about how best to either take care of themselves or get tested if they um, require testing. We have only one confirmed case through lab testing in our entire region, Southwest Virginia and Northeast Tennessee for our viewing area, and mm -hmm. that's Sullivan County, and that was last week. Right. But, but we know that the number of tests being done is very, very low. Right. Is it safe to assume that COVID-19 is here and is moving through the community even though there's one positive test? Yeah, I don't know if we can assume it's here, but we should assume that it could be here. Um, we don't have evidence from, you know, there should be a certain number of sick people showing up at the hospital and things like that, even though most infections are mild. Um, and we've not really detected it through, we've done a lot of testing through the hospital or a fair amount of testing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'd like to do more testing because that would give us more information on which to base school closures, you know, advising people about social distancing. Um, so the more testing we can do, the better. Um, and that should start occurring more and more over this rest of this week and coming weeks. Well, the school quest testing, school closing thing got settled today, it seemed. The governor was closing yeah. schools for weeks. Let's go to a question from our viewer, uh, Bonnie, about, a question, about the testing element. Uh, Bonnie asks, do our local doctors, clinics, and hospitals have the personnel and safety and supplies? And, and I really want to focus in on that part, the test kits in place. And if not, when might local testing be available? To that question, do we have the ability to test for COVID-19 locally now? What do you say? Yeah, so there's limited amount of testing we can do through the state health department. And we're mostly prioritizing to people that have traveled internationally to places or domestically where there's community transmission. Um, also to people that have confirmed contact with the case. Things we need to know for public health measures. Um, so, but there is testing more and more available through the private sector, so LabCorp and Quest and other private laboratories are testing. So our doctors in the community um, need to find out from their lab vendor how they can test their patients uh, in their offices, and we're encouraging that. We're actually having a call um, tomorrow with providers to help them understand how they can test their patients. Um, hospitals um, and others in the community should be ramping up their testing also. They're currently this, not there yet though, is that right? Um, they're they're, we're getting there, okay. um, but hopefully maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll start hearing some announcements about increased capacity to test through um, hospitals and other entities in the community. I, I've heard today from a few physicians who tried to call their health department and have not been able to get through. Uh, and uh, you're saying there is someone there. It's, we're still working out logistics of getting that phone call connected. Is yeah, that so, right? Yeah, we have an information line um, that if you call a local health department, they may route you to. Okay. We have plenty of people to answer the phone. We've had plenty of people all day. So if there was problems getting a hold of us, people should check, make sure they have the right number. We'll also make sure with our IT people that um, there's no kind of problem there. But that's the route IT if you was. want to get tested is you need to call your local doctor or your local hospital. They will send you probably to the health department, is that right? And then Well, so, you know, most community physicians do have the ability to test through their private laboratories as long as they make sure they get the right test kits, um, which they should have availability for. Um, so we are recommending most people should be tested through their primary care provider. Okay. 
Um, certain people we would want to test through the health department, so that includes people that, that have traveled internationally mm -hmm. somewhere where there's transmission or domestically, um, people who have contact with the case. Um, so primarily the first place people should go ask is their primary care provider, are you able to test? And if the provider thinks they have symptoms compatible with it and are able to test, they can test them in the private sector. All right, Linda expressed a, a concern through her question and I think it's an important one. She says, I'm 66 and live alone. Will I be able to take care of myself if I get coronavirus? Yeah, so we do recommend that people uh, be prepared to be in either quarantine or isolation for a period of time. Um, so people that live alone, you, you want to make sure you have some kind of social network that can support you. So if you need someone to go to the grocery store and bring you things, you know, whether it's your church or your neighbors or whatever. Much um, like with flu, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. If you're out, you need yeah, you to stay home. Yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go out with any respiratory virus. So. I want to hit this question before we hit a break, which is coming up. From Scott, how long will the virus stay active on a surface? I hear this question a lot. Yeah, what so does there's the all kinds of stuff us? out there. Um, so some people say three days, some people say nine days. The CDC says hours to days. The most important thing is if you touch surfaces in public, you should wash your hands afterwards um, and avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. So, right. yeah. Okay. Great questions. We're going to answer a few more on the other side of the break as we continue our discussion, monitoring coronavirus, asking the expert. That's after the break here on News Channel 11 at 530. Stay with us. We are monitoring the coronavirus and asking the experts your questions. Dr. David Kursky is the uh, regional health director 
Sure. Yeah. Okay, he's with, the Northeast, that. <laughs> with the Northeast Regional Health Department. Thanks for coming back. Let's go rapid fire with some of these questions because okay. there Sounds are good. a lot of great ones. Philip has three teenage type 1 diabetics, and that's tough enough. Uh, but, uh, and we're going to get to that question in a moment. Let's go back to Lu Luann's question. Uh, sorry, guys. Luann wants to know what period of time should we expect to limit our social contacts? Yeah, so, you know, we know schools are closing till March 31st. Um, it's unclear that. You know, everything's going to be over by then, and it's very unlikely that's going to be the case. I think the president said today, you know, like July, August time frame. So I think for several months, people should be prepared to social distance. That's hard to hear. It is. It is hard yeah. to think about. Um, but there are things you can do without being in close contact. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully when the weather gets better, we'll be able to go outside and enjoy our mm -hmm. parks and our nice spring weather. And just keep a safe distance yeah. from one from another. And now to Philip's question about his three teenagers who all have type 1 diabetes and he's wondering about their risk. So they, these would be people that are dealing with a significant health issue already. Yeah. So in general, children are at low risk from the virus, but children with um, certain illnesses like like diabetes, anything that lowers your immune system could be at increased risk. So we definitely want to protect those children. You mentioned weather, and that speaks to Terry's question. He wants to know, does the weather help or hurt the virus? We know seasonal flu warmth helps, right, to right. get rid of it. Yeah, so, I mean, we all have our fingers crossed that it, the summer weather and spring weather helps, but there's no guarantee this is a new virus. We don't know enough about it, so we're not planning on the weather helping at all. But if it does, that'll be a bonus. Tra uh, Chad wants to know, the virus transferring via blood transfusions. For many people, transfusions are part of life. What's right. the advice? Yeah, so CDC says there's no evidence that this virus will be transmitted through blood products. Um, so, you know, most respiratory viruses are not transmitted through blood. So it does not appear it's transmitted through blood transfusions. Let's go to the elbow and the fist bump. This is a question from Lisa, and I think it's a good question. We're saying don't do the handshake, do the bumps with the elbows and the fists. She says, but we're all coughing and sneezing on our elbows. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good point. I don't know if there's any official recommendation. Personally, I don't do either. I just, if it's a handshaking situation, keep my hands in my pockets and smile and yeah. greet people. And that's the new hello. Yeah. Uh, Donna wants to know about symptoms of the virus, and what about stomach ailments? Because, we, you know, the, we're passing around other stuff right now. None right. of that stopped. Yeah. Is that a symptom? Yeah, so it can be a symptom in a very small proportion of cases, but primarily the things I think you just showed on the screen earlier, fever, cough, shortness of breath, are the primary symptoms okay. for coronavirus, body aches. Uh, what is, what is most concerning to you at this point? If we could get inside of your head and talk to you about what worries you the most as, as someone with your depth of experience in community health, what is it? Yeah, I mean, I think we're doing all the right things. I would like to know more about if we have community spread yet, like if there was more testing going on. So um, the lack of testing, I, would, I wish we had more testing so we knew better how to you know, one to tell schools to close. You know, part of the reason for closing now is we just don't have enough information, so we're erring on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Maybe closing early, but doing it for the safety of everybody. You know, right now I'm hearing from health officials, test the people who've been overseas, maybe been exposed in those type three or those uh, mm -hmm. sort of category three, tier, yeah. tier three areas, or someone who's already showing symptoms. By the way, you've probably been contagious for days prior mm -hmm. or a period prior. Are, are you, Wishing that, are we moving toward a day where there would be mass testing of, of everyone to just see who's positive and who isn't? Well, I think once we have enough information that there's widespread community uh, transmission, um, you know, maybe we'll just recommend that sick people stay home, assume that you might have it, um, even right now. So people that can't figure out how to get tested, we do recommend anyone with a respiratory illness just isolate themselves at home for at least 24 hours after they get better whether or not you're tested. If you are tested for coronavirus and you're positive, you know, there'll be a longer period for which you'll have to be in isolation. But um, just common sense, if you have the flu or anything, we recommend stay home for 24 hours. Um, at least. After you, after you get better, yeah, yeah, at least 24 hours. Are you socially isolating? Um, so I go to work still. Um, we try to increase social distance at work. Um, we went out and enjoyed a hike with uh, the family the other day. But, you know, in terms of large crowds, you know, we did go to a restaurant, you know, just try to make sure you wash your hands after you have handled menus and other mm -hmm. things before you eat. 
Um, so there are things you can do to lower your risk. Um, we heard the president today talk about not maybe think going out to restaurants or shops. Where do you where, where are you on this right now? Yeah, so I mean, it, with the Department of Health, we just heard that today. So we'll have to figure out what our exact position is. But if you do go out, there are things you can do to limit um, the danger. You know, you can do takeout or drive through. If you go in a restaurant, like I said, you know, before you actually eat, make sure you wash your hands. Um, I think restaurants are doing in the area are doing things to you know they're doing increased cleaning and things uh, mm -hmm. you know to lower potential transmission. Sure, you're not hunkering down and hiding. No, I'm not. No. Are you hoarding? Uh, no. <laughs> My wife bought a lot of lima beans the other day, which I don't eat lima beans, so I'm out of luck on that. <laughs> She's sending a message there, yeah. right? <laughs> well, uh, that's good to hear, and good, good common sense and practical wisdom to hear. Uh, will you come back, please? Because sure. we appreciate you uh, being our expert to ask. This uh -huh. is Dr. David Kirschke. Thank you so much for joining us and for answering our viewer questions. Thank you. We want great questions. Yeah, to our wonderful viewers. We appreciate them. Keep them coming. It's questions at WJHL.com.